If you're one of the largest toy producers in the world and have been around for almost a hundred years, there are going to be a few stories that may or may not be true. Hasbro is behind some of your most favorite childhood products like My Little Pony and the Transformers. There's a good chance that if you're a kid growing up in the past 30 years, they had some sort of plaything that appealed to you. I for sure had a bunch of Transformers and I loved Play-Doh. We're going to pull back the veil on some of the creepy stuff that this company might have been doing with today's list of top 10 scary Hasbro theories. As always, I would love it if you could like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell. And stick around for the whole list because I'm going to be doing some more pet shoutouts, which you guys love so much. Remember, if you want me to shout out your pet, you can hit me up on Instagram. Without taking any longer, let's get into this list. Coming in at number 10, we have The Lesson of Monopoly. We have all dug into Monopoly when we were kids. I'm sure there's some of you out there that still have broken friendships from this game. I know that Monopoly went through a ban period in my house because none of us could play it without screaming at each other. Pictionary was much more friendly. Well, apparently the person who made Monopoly made the famous board game to show people the horrors of capitalism. Looking at the state of the world, I don't think the message was very successful, but that being said, it does work. There has never been a game of Monopoly that has gone over nicely. It always ends with family and friends ruthlessly ripping money out of each other's hands and then putting people through poverty so they can see themselves float to the top. Coming in at number 9, we have the secret Play-Doh ingredients. So what goes into Play-Doh? How does the company make the perfect mixture of ingredients to make one of the most pliable toys on the market? Well, I'll tell you that nobody knows. Some of the base ingredients are known, like flour, salt, and water, but the rest of the mixture is similar to the Kentucky Colonel's recipe, as no one knows what's in it. So this has created a lot of speculation. I mean, it's obvious why they don't tell anyone what's in the highly successful product. They don't want another company to come out with a product that could rival theirs. But what on earth is in it? Some people think it's just a standard mix of chemicals that you could find in most toys, while other people have claimed that Play-Doh could have toxic chemicals that have long-lasting effects. This has never been proven, but this is a theories video, so we can kind of speculate on weird stuff. Coming in at number eight, we have fake toys. If you scour around the internet to buy toys, you will find a ton of official websites where you can buy toys. But there are some shady places where the toys that are being sold aren't official. Who knew there was an underground toy market? This is bonkers. Well, it should be no surprise that people on the internet are trying to rip you off. You can't trust anyone online. But this is where the story gets a little weird. There was an online retailer that was selling Hasbro toys prior to release. Some collectors were using this service to get their hands on toys, but most of them were fake, no surprise. But some of them were real, so people started accusing Hasbro of being behind this fake toy distribution. Maybe they were, maybe this was just an employee who had access to some of the toys and was using this as an opportunity to take advantage of some people. Who knows and who cares? There are so many things in the world that are more important than fake toy salesmen. Coming in at number seven, we have Hasbro dolls make kids nicer. Now, this is really about all dolls, but Hasbro makes a ton of dolls, so I thought I would include them on the list. So apparently kids who grew up taking care of dolls tend to have higher levels of empathy. The experience of taking care of a doll and treating it like a person with love and respect gives a child a foundation of how to treat people. That's kind of cute. So the answer to fixing everyone in the world is we just have to give everyone a doll and they will be nicer to each other. Either that, or we could get every Every kid to only play battle royales from the time that they are born and then we have one massive battle royale every year and the champion gets to be king for the whole year. That sounds like a way cooler society. Throw out the dolls and let's get even more bloodshed. Coming in at number six, we have Hasbro promoted violence. How on earth could such a thing happen? You mean the toy company that makes fake toy guns like Nerf wants to see more violence in their products? You mean the people who made a cartoon about a robot war and a secret military group fighting terrorists wanted things to lean more towards the violence side? Well, this should be no surprise to you. Now, I'm not saying that the people at Hasbro deliberately looked for violent products and they wanted kids to beat the hell out of each other so they can make a quick buck. We we don't have the emails to prove that. But what we do know is that the Transformers were selling pretty good, but the people at Hasbro thought they could do better. So they hired new writers for the show to give it an edgier feel, and apparently they had a pretty lax policy on violence 
because they knew that violence would make the toys sell better. So they weren't outright telling people to make the show more violent, but if things were to get a little aggressive, they wouldn't stop you. And how can you blame them? They were selling things to young boys. No one likes to watch pain and suffering more than young boys. Just give them a magnifying glass and an anthill and you'll see what I'm talking about. Coming in at number five, we have Hasbro makes gangster rap. I bet you never thought there would be a relation between My Little Pony and Suge Knight, but now there is. So back in 2019, a big deal went down. Hasbro, who is known as the largest toy maker in the world, well, they bought Death Row Records. This is absolutely bonkers. And this isn't even a theory, this is just a fact. Now it's not as salacious as what I just said. The figureheads at Hasbro didn't think that they wanted to completely change the company and the business and become the biggest record label in the world. No, what really happened is Hasbro bought Entertainment One, which is a production company that makes a ton of content for kids, but also happens to own Death Row Records. But this has made people speculate on what this means for Hasbro. Will they get into the rap game in a deeper way? Well, only time will tell. Coming in at number four, we have people are addicted to the smell of Play-Doh. I mean, after watching one episode of My Strange Addiction, it should be no surprise that someone out there is huffing Play-Doh containers to get through the day. Well, at least it's non-toxic, right? Unless that other theory was right. But there are some people out there who are obsessed with the smell of Play-Doh. Apparently, they really like it because it reminds them of a simpler time, and that makes sense. You can't get much simpler than rolling around fake dough to make fake food. When you're doing stuff like that, you don't even know what taxes are yet. Well, people love this smell so much that Hasbro actually came out with a Play-Doh cologne. That's what's really gonna pull in the ladies. That's what every woman wants. A man who smells like he's been making fake hamburgers inside a pillow fort all day. Actually, that sounds like a great time. Maybe I should pick up that cologne. Coming in at number three, we have My Little Pony has innuendos. It doesn't matter how pure you try to make something, there will always be someone out there who tries to provoke. It. Now, just so everyone knows, this is not in reference to the current My Little Pony show or toy brand. For this point, we're going to have to head back to the 80s when the original cartoon came out. Back in the 80s, you could get away with a lot more. And one of those things was the names for the My Little Pony characters. Some of the names included Dangler, Pillow Talk, and Swinger. Now, this could have just been a coincidence. Maybe the showrunners thought that these were all cute names and that there was nothing wrong with them. Or maybe they hated writing writing for the show and they wanted it taken off the air, so they purposely snuck in a bunch of gross names. Who knows what the reasoning behind this is, but it's pretty hard to ignore this one. Coming in at number two, we have Optimus Prime saved Duke's life. There were two massive cartoons in the 80s that shaped an entire generation. And these two shows were, of course, G.I. Joe and The Transformers. You would be hard pressed to find a kid growing up in the 80s who had not heard of these guys. Well, the shows became so big that eventually there was a massive movie for The Transformers. And in it, one of the most tragic things in movie history happens. Optimus Prime dies. Oh my God, it was devastating and everyone was heartbroken. People were so heartbroken that they sent a slew of angry letters to Hasbro. How could you kill the hero of a generation? Well, here's the thing. There was a G.I. Joe movie right on the horizon, and in that movie, there was supposed to be the death of a major character. Duke was supposed to get shot and killed, or at least that's what the rumors say. There was so much backlash after the Autobots leader died that they rewrote the end of the G.I. Joe movie. And coming in at the number one spot, we have Transformers is about overthrowing the government. You got to go deep into the weeds for this one. So if we go into the Transformers lore, we will find that the Transformers were made by an alien race known as the Quintessons. They made the Autobots to work in factories and they made the Decepticons to fight in wars all over the universe. Eventually, the Autobots and the Decepticons gain sentience and emotions and they fight back against their creators. They take back Cybertron and then there's a conflict between the Autobots and the Decepticons when it came to who should govern Cybertron. Some people see this as a representation of the working class and the military being forced to fight and work for the wealthy. I mean, we have seen this happen again and again and again throughout history, so this isn't really an original idea, but it's pretty heavy for a kid's show. All right, everyone, that has been our list, and as promised, we are going to be doing some more pet shoutouts. Remember, if you want me to shout out your pet, you can hit me up on Instagram. I pick new pets each day, so if you don't get big 
picked one day, you can message back another day. I usually pick this message most recently, and if it takes me a little while to get back to you, I'm very sorry. I have a lot of these to do. Without taking any longer, let's shout out some pets. First on the list, we have Dez, who is giving off some big time dad energy. That dog looks like a dad just chilling. Then we have Smiley, who looks too comfy to get up. We have Star, who is chilling in the comfiest chair of all time. Next, we have Odin, who clearly loves to cuddle. And to close it out, we have Kilo, who loves scratches and the sun. All right, everyone, that has been our list. As always, I would love it if you could like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell. Until next time, I've been your host, Chaterena, and keep watching out for Hasbro. Who knows what they're up to? Bye.